Hello. Hi, everybody. Hey. <laughs> hi. <laughs> so, hi, everyone. Hi. Welcome. Um, so, if you are here for makeup troubleshooting tips for mature skin, then you're in the right place. <laughs> That's a mouthful. <laughs> you are I'm glad you're here and so uh, my good saint fellow friend uh, my saint fellow artist Janine is joining me today and we're gonna be sharing some great um, cream makeup troubleshooting tips for mature women and so we are glad you're here thank you um, <laughs> I had to move my spot Janine because um, the Sun was coming in and now the Sun's gone but it's oh, okay. no. <laughs> I'm still in front of a window yeah, excellent. yeah. <laughs> so um, over the next about 15 or 20 minutes, we're going to be sharing some of the top troubleshooting tips that uh, we get questions on for uh, cream makeup. So yes, excellent. Yeah. I see lots of hearts. And Yay. Lots of this is great. Their age. Really so um, as we get great. going here, let me just introduce myself and then I'm going to introduce uh, Janine. My name's Karen and I'm 55 and I do have mature skin. <laughs> and uh, while you are watching this make sure you jot down all of your your questions because at the end we'll have a little q a session so jot down lots of your questions yep. and um <laughs> save those for the end we're definitely going to go over everything and uh before i turn it over to janine um to get started tell us if you have mature skin in the comments and throw up some hearts also and then let us know too where you are watching from so I'm going to pass it over great. to you, Janine, and we're just going to get started. Yeah, excited. Great. Yeah. Thank you. First, thank you, Karen, for inviting me today. This is great. It was so exciting to be here. And to all of you for joining. Um, as Karen said, my name is Janine, and I'll be 61 in June. And I definitely have mature skin. Um, I have my makeup on already today, so covers a lot of those things that we have. But the main thing that I wanted to start with today is where the troubleshooting begins. And that starts, as we know, with good skincare. A lot of people maybe, you know, I miss up sometimes, don't do exactly what we're to do. But the main thing is to start with skincare. And that is so important for cleansing, toning. If you have, you know, bigger pores, on uh, uh, toning will neutralize that. It'll, it'll calm down that oiliness. And moisturizing is so important. Even if you think you have oily skin, you still need to moisturize. Um, exfoliating is really important to get those dead skin cells off, maybe once or twice a week lately. And then dermaplaning, um, I have one of mine here. This is just a Revlon one that I purchased. It's just a surgical razor that you dermaplane your skin and it takes off the peach fuzz. That is so remarkable, right, Karen? Yeah, or, and everyone's afraid to do that. Everyone's so no, scared. No, it's so easy. I, we, we could walk you through it. I could walk you through it. It's, it's so easy. You just do it and takes all the de dead skin cells off mm -hmm. and the peach fuzz so your your makeup here is so much better and then um another thing that's good if you like to use them is serums serums are really good um for your skin vitamin c is excellent and all these troubleshooting things before any product that you use these are the main things that you should do because no matter what you use the makeup the product is not going to set right on your skin um and and basically that's where it starts is good yeah. skincare. So anyway, so Karen, what do you, what kind of tips do you have? <laughs> yeah, Janine, that's, that's such a great point because I think so, so many women, um, you know, we haven't been taking care of ourselves. Right. We've always put everybody else first. And so now, um, in midlife, we're finally kind of taking some time for ourselves and, you know, I'm guilty of it in my twenties and thirties, you know, I didn't wear sunscreen. I didn't take care of my skin. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I might have washed my face with Noxema. I'm not, I'm not knocking that, but I don't yeah. think I ever use moisturizer. So really yeah. important. Those are Small really way. great tips. Yeah. Um, so the next thing I was going to talk to everybody about is um, how do you know if you have the right shade of makeup? And, um, you know, that's, that can be tricky sometimes, you know, in the, well, we used to be able to go to the mall and get color matched, you know, the, the young, mm -hmm. um, you know, makeup a uh, person behind the counter would like do a little swipe on our cheek and things like that. And, you know, I think when I, oh, I don't know, maybe about five to 10 years ago, I, you know, I was looking at the makeup. I compared the shades that I was using before and they were so light. And that's when I started to notice as I got into my fifties, cakiness, 
dryness. My skin looked flaky. Um, my pores were just like, I mean, I have pores all over. I've got wrinkles and fine lines and my pores were just like headlights, you know, <laughs> they're right there. And <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, the first thing we want to talk about is, you know, getting the right shade as we mature. And, you know, majority of the time that's probably going a shade darker than maybe what you have in your makeup bag right now. And if you're not, if you're seeing things like cakiness, um, your makeup's not lasting all day, uh, you're having to layer a lot of your makeup on, whether it be liquid or powder or cream, it's probably a shade that's too light. And so, you know, if it's not giving you enough coverage, I'm just kind of reading over some of my notes. Um, it's really probably a shade too light. And I think, you know, a lot of us, we see, you know, maybe you get color matched by an artist by myself with like this 3D cream makeup. And you're, a lot of times I hear, oh my gosh, those shades are way too dark for me. I did the same thing. I did the same thing. And, um, but this makeup is, it blends out. It doesn't look like that on your skin. Right. And so you definitely want to make sure that you don't have a shade that's too light. And so if you're seeing those issues like cakiness, um, uh, oh, what's the other? It's getting into your fine lines. It's, you know, emphasizing all of that. Then you are probably using a shade that's too light. So what do we want to do? We want to go at least a shade darker or maybe even warmer than what, what we would expect. And so... Um, let me just look over here. I just want to make sure we don't miss anything. There's so much good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, the other thing we want to talk about also is that the opposite of that is if you are using a shade that's too too dark and you need to go a little bit a shade lighter. And uh, may, how do you know that you're doing that? Well, maybe your neck and your face aren't matching or your skin looks really orange or way too yellow, um, then you're probably um, needing to maybe go a shade lighter. But I bet <laughs> if you're a mature woman on here, you're probably the opposite troubleshooting tip. You're probably seeing with your current makeup, um, the cakiness, the fine lines, the emphasized pores, it's not lasting, it's not blending. And that's a really, that's a surefire sign that you need to go a shade darker. Okay. So I don't know. We'll definitely jot down some notes. If you gals have questions for us at the end here, we can really deep dive into a little bit more of that. Um, another thing that you can look out for is um, or to troubleshoot, let's say you're a lot of us, okay, our neck and our chest doesn't match this part of our face. So we're either lighter and darker and ruddier and lots of sun damage down here, or we're the opposite. Our face, by the time we put our makeup on, looks perfect, but then we look down on our neck and it looks so light. It's like, like this is not, this the head does not match this right. neck. So <laughs> a couple things that you can do to, for that is if you're using a cream contour, bring that contour down. Don't just stop here. Make sure you're blending that contour down. And another great tip is to use some cream bronzer. And so you can dab into some bronzer and warm up your neck and your chest. And that's just really going to kind of connect these two. So you don't have that distinct differentiation. So, yeah. yeah um, so, Janine, let me think yeah, so how you go and share something next. Yeah, as far as um, the important thing with this too is, is it's really important to get color matched. Um, either if you have an artist already, you can reach out to her, or if you want to get reach out to Karen or I for a color match, it's really important because we want to be your mentor for this makeup. <laughs> um, it's a kind of makeup where mm -hmm. it's personalized just to you. It doesn't just, you don't just, we don't just get colors, here you go. It's personalized to you for your mm -hmm. needs. You have age spots and, and um, any kind of, you know, any kind of, things that yeah. on your face that your discoloration there you go the palette it's Janine thank you for telling me that because I forgot to show I just kind of wanted to show them really quick just what you were saying yeah. is that you know for those of you obviously I don't I have my makeup on but the makeup that I'm wearing right now is this color here scary right <laughs> this is my color corrector this is my mate uh wait this is one of these is my, I think this is my main shade and this is a brightener and this is my contour. And again, you see they, you know, you might see these colors and just a, a lot of times you're just like, no way right. am I orange. No, you're yeah. not orange, but yeah. this is a color corrector shade. Um, 
these, you know, are pretty close to my skin tone. And then the contour looks so dark, but I have contour on. I have it on, on, on. So anyway, Janine, go for it. I just wanted to oh, show. Yeah, no, I forgot to show. Yeah, yeah that's, that's I know. It's, and I mean, yeah. if that's the whole thing is where exactly it's, mm -hmm. you don't think those colors, you see them like, oh, those colors aren't yeah. right for me, but they're, they're, it's, it's so customized to you and we want to yeah. be there for you. So either reach out to us as, as for a color match or if you already have an artist, reach out to yeah. her. It's really important. Yeah. Um, and then I guess the next thing I talk about is how to set your makeup. Oh, yeah. You know, Karen and I were talking about that earlier. Um, that ties right in, doesn't it? It sure ties. Right shade, you got to make sure it lasts all day. Right? right. Like she was saying, if your texture, make sure your color is right. If you have some texturing, you could have some dry skin, flakiness. But as long as your colors are right, and that's what we do, we come at you, then you go into how to set it. And there's, it's really not hard. I mean, it's kind of like fine tuning it. Everybody's different. Um, but I've been doing a technique lately that, because I'm always reading up on things, um, is how to how to set it. So because it's cream base, it moves with your skin. It doesn't set it to your fine lines and wrinkles. It, um, it's good for your skin uh, as we mature, as we know. My skin's changed, you know, different things have changed. And so it moves with your skin. It doesn't um, set into the fine lines and wrinkles, but it also allows your skin to breathe, which is nice. Yeah. So, and it doesn't, it's really good for your skin because it's cream based. It's not going to dry your skin out like powder. You know, Janine, oh. real quick, keep that thought. I want to tell you, you know, when I first started using this makeup two and a half years ago, like I said before, I was flaky and dry. Um, mm -hmm. I would say whenever people asked, I have dry skin. I have sun damaged skin, hyperpigmentation, color, uh, sunspots, spots, yep. you know, age spots, too. and dry skin. Yep. Now, I say I have normal to moisturize skin. I mean, and this makeup it, has this compounding effect. It and does. It takes a little bit to get used to, doesn't it? It takes a while yeah. for our skin to adjust. Yeah. It really, it really does. And I think the biggest thing that I did it, I think Karen did, we all did it like putting too much on. Yeah. Like everybody does that. It's like, oh, wait, no. But you, you just need so little. Yeah. And then it all comes together. So anyway, as far as the setting, um, you would apply it with your brush. Um, very light, you know, in the areas where we walk you through how to apply it. And then you would blend it out really lightly, either with a perfector, which would bring me to this. This is our perfector sponge. Um, this is an older one, but mm -hmm. Karen's got one too. Karen's got a new one. I just got a new one today. Oh, dirty. Anyway, my old ancient <laughs> one. <laughs> anyway, this is a perfector. And, but you have to prep it first. You don't want to just use a setting spray on this. You want to um, wet it under warm water and then towel blot it or paper towel blot it, and then spray your setting spray on. That way it adheres to that. So you could use this and your effector, or if you want to use one of your brushes that are phenomenal. And so once you set it very lightly, like Karen's doing, then you're going to go and you're going to take your um, setting spray and you're going to spray your brush. Just spray it into the camera, I think. <laughs> okay. I can't see. I don't have my glasses on. Um, and then you're going to go over and then tap. And you don't want to rub it in. You don't want to do like a paintbrush. You want to tap and blend, dab it, and set it all with the setting spray. And that's going to really help your makeup to adhere and have more staying power. Mm -hmm. Now, I know we've gotten, I think we've, I've seen some things. A lot of ladies are with oily skin. Mm -hmm. So yes. here's some yes. tricks. That's a big so, question. That's a big I, question. I hear that. Yeah. That's a big Oily question. Skin, do you have to use a primer? I know you're going to, you're going to answer that. Right. So, you know, honestly, the majority of us, I'm not saying everybody, everybody's difference to your preference. The majority of us with mature skin don't have, usually have oily skin, but you can still. So if you have oily skin, you would apply your makeup as you would. I wouldn't recommend, I'd recommend if you really are that oily, maybe a mattifying primer, <laughs> um, something that's water-based not silicone based because it'll make the way the makeup run off. And you put um, that on, you would put that you on, put that on, you, put you would put that on, on. you'd okay. apply that before your makeup. Yes. The mattifying primer, if you need it, but with Oily this skin. makeup, you don't really need right. a primer. You don't, yes. cause it really has got its own primer the way it sets. And then what you would do is if you still feel like, you know, you're really oily, usually our oiliness is in our T zone here mm -hmm. and here. That's, you know, you would take a setting powder, uh, we have vanilla dust setting powder. Karen has up too, I think. Or is that what you have out? Yeah. Yeah. And the perfector. And you could tap your T-zone areas with that. And, and this would it, be or, after you, you applied your makeup? This would be after, after after you applied your makeup. I'm sorry. I'm jumping ahead here. So you would okay. do your mattifying primer. Then you would do your makeup, set it. And this is the very last step is your setting powder. 
very, very last step. Almost thinking of making a recipe and baking something. You're going to bake, you're going to apply your setting powder. Mm -hmm. That's the last thing you do before you put it in the oven. So you're going to either use your vector or we have a powder brush or one of our brushes mm -hmm. and you can put it on really heavy, bake it, let it set to your skin for about 10 minutes. I mean, really where you see it and then lightly brush it off and that'll set your bake up. And, or you could have it throughout the day just for a touch up. Mm -hmm. um, there's also translucent. I think it's, is it Cody? Air yeah. Sponge, yeah. Karen? I think there's that's several. A, yeah, Cody, that's been around it's forever. Been out, yeah, it's been around forever. Yeah. That's a, as long as it's translucent because you don't want to see it. But right. that's really good for a trick for oily skin. So okay. anyway. And you um, know, sometimes I, you know, because I have my comp, I, when I used best. to work or run around, um, I put, because they're magnetic, I do have a setting powder in my compact. And I just have an extra brush that I'll use, but, or I can, you know, but I like, you know, there's times if I'm having a hot flash or hot it's flash. super yeah. summery or I'm running around and I'm sweating, you know, there's, yeah. you know, you can touch up with just a little bit of powder throughout Absolutely. the day. It's, like you can't, it's not like you can't use powder, but we right. just want to get away from it because the, you know, Right, exactly. I think if you, and I think if, like we said earlier, the troubleshooting with the skincare, mm -hmm. I think if you really stay, you know, routine with that and regimented, mm -hmm. you'll see a difference. You may not tend to be as oily. Good. So, but anyway, that's, so Karen, anything? And then, yeah. What else did you have? I know you have more um, about setting. I interrupted um, you a couple times. Yeah. But that's I okay. To, I no, I think um, cream-based, let's see. Basically, it's, it's, basically i think that's it for the mm -hmm. setting just your regular setting or with the oil if you're oily um i think that's all i had right now yeah. and and, um, and and it, it does sit on top of your skin so it's mm -hmm. you got to kind of change the way you think about makeup when you're using uh, more of a cream based makeup uh, especially this cream based makeup because it does it, it sits on top of your skin and it shouldn't feel heavy it shouldn't feel tacky it shouldn't feel sticky that's a sure sign that you've used way too much Yes. And again, that goes probably back to not having the right shade or not, or just using too much. Um, too much, yes. Too much. Yeah. And, and, and you know what? Everybody, probably 99%, oh, yeah. including me, including you, the first time and the second time I used my makeup, I used way too much. <laughs> because yes. that's what I Absolutely. thought you were supposed to do. Right, you know, exactly. With and, your liquid makeup, you dump it out and you just slather it all over. And if it doesn't cover, you slather more and then you put pow pressed powder and then, yeah, concealer. And and, yeah, exactly. It's And really quick, you just made me think of something real quick too. Is, this is the difference with this makeup. It's not like a flat, you don't have just a flat one color. When you use a mm -hmm. liquid, you just have one flat color of color. Right. We, we don't have one dimension to our skin. Our skin is all dimensional. I have like yellow here. I have brown here. Mm -hmm. I've got age spots. Um, so this makeup is designed for you, customized for you to bring that whole look together with different colors, different highlight, which are foundations. Yeah. So that's what like she was saying, like you don't, you're, and you're just not gonna have that one flat look yeah. like a liquid. It's so different. Yeah, it's such it a is. different concept. It is such Excellent a for mature concept. skin. Yeah. Yeah. So if you are just joining us, thanks, Janine. Um, we Welcome. are talking about cream makeup troubleshooting tips, um, specifically for us mature gals. And again, like I'm 55, Janine is going to be 61 here in a few months. So um, it's just such a, a, it's not specifically made for mature women. It's made for all skin types and all ages, but it sure does us. A lot of favors it's, it's really awesome. really great um really so let me see here i have one more and then we'll uh take some questions because i bet you guys gals have some yeah. have questions, questions. Um, yes. make sure in a little bit here i'll turn on the question bubble and we'll we'll answer some questions for everybody so the last thing i want to talk about is probably um besides you know my makeup is cakey and getting in my fine lines and all of that that troubleshooting Probably the biggest <laughs> question I get a lot is, let me go to it, um, under eye, under eye issues. So either you are noticing or have under eye discoloration. Now this could be due to menopause, hormonal changes, um, just hyperpigmentation. It could either be brown, it could be a purple tone, a purple blue tone. It could be, you could have a red eyes. There's, you know, depending on, there's so many different, and again, that's why it's really important, you know, to, to get color match so that you can get the right color corrector. But uh, as we age, 
we pretty much cannot get away with taking a really light concealer shade and just slapping on a really light color right underneath our eyes. It's just not going to cover what we most of us have going on right here. So the best thing that you can try if you're having issues with discoloration underneath your eyes is to use a highlight shade that is that if you if you have discoloration that is going to diffuse or count color correct or counteract and that's for me this this shade here i kind of have a brownish purple underneath my eyes um and so you want to use a little bit of that and really you you just tap into that and you're going to apply that underneath your eye okay that's where you want to apply the darker color correcting color for here okay if you just if you don't have any discoloration under your eyes lucky you you would just put underneath your eye um, the foundation shade that matches your skin tone the closest um we don't want to keep pulling forward like you know most of us are going to have a little bit of that that pocket of fatty skin we're going to call it an under eye bag i hate that term bag but basically that and so if we go in here and we put a really light shade like we used to when we were younger it's it's just going to emphasize the under eye puffiness, the under eye bags, and the discoloration. So you're either gonna wanna go in right underneath with a color corrector shade, or if you have normal, you know, you don't have any color correcting issues, just the main shade underneath. Now, when you want to do your brightening and add some of that, which traditionally they would call that your concealer, you know, you can still we can still do that by adding some brightener here on the inside of our eye. I've got brightener on out here you know, down my nose and here, yeah. to, you know, and brightener, we all don't have to use it. It's, you know, you, you just want to make sure that you're not using something that's, you know, way too light. And again, emphasizing, um, you know, some of the things that we have going on. So the other thing besides the under eye discoloration that I get questions on a lot is under eye, the under eye bags. And like, how can I get rid of those with makeup? Well, truthfully, we're not getting rid of, get ridding, getting rid of things with makeup. I mean, these are things that are just part of our face, right? right. You know, they're, they're, not, they're not going away. But we can definitely do things with makeup to, you know, lessen the appearance of those. Or um, so kind of a fun thing that you can do if you have, like I have really, I have bulldog eyes. I have really, when I tip down, I've got really deep indentations right here. That trough, we might call it. It's kind of like, you know, your under eye bag, um, that's the indentation right underneath that puffiness and the the shadow that it creates just looks like it just it bothers a lot of us right i also have like a lot of us <laughs> very severe marionette lines around here and then right across here i also have um some deep indentations or valleys you might want to call them on our face <laughs> these beautiful valleys and and, yeah. uh, and wrinkles and things, but you know what? <laughs> fun stuff. So, fun stuff, <laughs> but you can use a lighter, like one or two shades lighter than your main shade. And you can just kind of pick it up with a smaller brush and you can dab in, again, less is more with this makeup. This is just like a flat brush. It happens to be one of the, I think it's a multitasker, but just a nice small flat brush. You can even use something even smaller um, like this. But we're just picking up a little bit of a light shade. And this is going to be kind of hard for me to do. Um, I'm going to be guessing here in the, in the camera <laughs> okay. what I'm doing. But, you know, right under here, you usually, um, mine goes right across here. So you can tap in a little bit of this lighter shade right in that, kind of right in that trough. Mm -hmm. And what it helps to do besides brightening along here in the side of this part of your face, is that is going to kind of help turn that valley more into like a flat tundra. So, and then you can either tap that out with your finger. Um, I like to use, again, this is your, this is invaluable for us who have mature skin. You know, make sure you're using a perfector sponge, make sure you're using it properly prepared, but then you can kind of come in and press and tap. And that just kind of adds a little bit of, um, I don't know if you guys, gals can see it um, on the camera here, but it just helps to lessen that severity of that shadow and, and kind of bring that indentation forward. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
so many All things those... we can do with makeup and it's it's so fun it's you fun. just need to not be afraid to try um things and experiment there's yeah. no mistakes it's everything's true. fixable <laughs> yep can't right? just blend it out can't exactly. really make a mistake it's just use makeup. your perfecter sponge yeah get too much of something um but let's see here janine let's turn it over i think that's all i had i just kind of we wanted to touch on some of these we're you know if you think this has been helpful um let us know message yeah. either myself or janine but i'll let me turn the thank you thanks gals thanks. let me turn thank the you. question and answer bubble on so it's the little yeah. question bubble down in the bottom let me turn that on i love questions this will be good it is and so what help. You i love do, help we love helping let me see how do i do it let me see i go to comment and then you can do this yourself if you're ever doing a live you can turn off commenting and then you can have the questions on so go ahead and hit that little question bubble if you have a question for us yeah. And we'll stick around for a little bit and we'll answer these. If you happen to um, be watching this later on the replay, we're going to be sharing this to our to our pages. You can comment replay later in the comments. Yep. And you can ask questions right there in the comments. You can private message Janine and I at any time. Let me see if yep. I have a question yet. There yeah. might have been questions. So if you have questions, just tap that little bubble and ask us. Um, if you are having issues with your cream foundation and you need help then reach out to the artist that color matched you and or you can you know message us for help as well and then if you are interested in trying something like this reach out to Janine and I we'd yeah, love to color least, match all right to not you. so here we go here's oh. a question okay. from Joyce excellent Joyce how long oh. does pins last okay so Janine, I told you I was going to say this, and then I did it, and I, I, I wrote it down. So <laughs> this makeup is, what did I say? What percentage more pigmented than normal liquid? So, like 90-something 90, 90 more 90-something percent, percent, percent more pigmented. And yes, so you don't this need a makeup lot. should be lasting you a really long time. So your color corrector shade that you're going to use just the littlest amount, this should be lasting you probably three to six months. Six months, yep. Okay, definitely. if not longer. Because you're not using a lot. You're, you're using not very using little. a lot. Your contour, you know, is going to last again like six six months. Right. Um, then your main shade should be lasting. You know, you're going to use that more because it's more um, kind of like your main foundation shade. Right. Probably like two to three months. And then your brightener should be lasting you because, again, just a little bit just of the brightener bit. pop, you know, six to nine months. So if you're going through, if you're using this makeup, and you are already at the bottom of a tin and you just got it like a month ago, that's a sure sign that you're using too much. Too much. So thank Jan uh, Joyce, thank you for that question. Yes, Joyce. I was gonna say, yeah. hey Joyce. Yeah. Okay, let me it's see another question. Less is more for sure. Yeah, here's that a question we have. Another question. Um, I have sunspots in a cluster on each cheek. My main highlight is mango mixed with sandy. I have mature, what does it say here? I have mature skin, 51 thoughts. All right, go ahead, Janine. I know you have sunspots. I also have sunspots, so I'll let you answer this one. So I have sunspots, sunspots. sunspots so as I talked yeah, about yeah. earlier, an age spots, sunspots all sound better, um, is basically the skincare, the troubleshooting that, you know, getting all that dead skin off, that will help diminish some of those. Definitely, I, I, I just started it, not like maybe a year ago, and it de definitely diminishes um, that. And... Um, that's where the color correcting comes in. I mean, it, you know, everybody's skin tone's different. So mm -hmm. depending on who your artist is or whoever, I would maybe check back with them and see maybe there's yeah. some other color, a highlight color that'll help with that. Because depending on the color of your age spots, they could be ruddy, they could be muddy, they could be grayish. Yeah. Um, that all depends. So, And um, I think she mentioned that she was using mango and sandy. And so you may sandy. need to go a shade darker or... Like I have a really stubborn one over here where I actually, I, it's a really big one. It's about that big. I'm not kidding. And it's right in the line of my contour. So what I do is I actually will color correct with mango first, and then I'll put my foundation, a little bit of foundation over the top. 
And then um, I'll stipple on like my contour so that I don't wipe it away. You got to be careful that you're also using the right brushes and the right, right application. So if you start swiping, you did all that work to color correct and conceal, right? And then you come in and you start swiping or rubbing your contour on where you're actually rubbing all that hard work, that right. beautiful uh, color correcting and stuff. So, and also um, mango may not be dark enough dark Maybe. enough that's what i was gonna oh, say right yeah. to, you might have to, to go a little darker with your um with your color another thing too is if if they're like i have them in my contour line mm -hmm. so a lot of times your contour will help yeah uh diminish those age spots too depending so, on the yeah. color of your contour it so that's another good thing tone. you're right for your gin tone right so it just depends on what your color you know what your yeah. color your age spot is all right we've got another one here from two joyce questions. two questions one is one is the name on the bottom of the tin of your color and what, let me go here. Sorry. <laughs> We're so bad. <laughs> let me get my glasses on. Why did I take them off to read? I know, what I know. Is, okay. What is the color that makes it good for your skin? Okay. What is the name of the, that you're using and what is the color that makes it good for your skin? Um, well, it's going to depend. It's custom matched to you. So the shades I use are mango, sandy, Mango is my color corrector. Sandy is my main shade. And for my pop or brightener, a lot of times I'll use candlelit or white peach a little bit more. I'll use Astoria. Janine, okay, is going to use a totally different combination. Right. So that's why it's really important to get important color to matched yep, to exactly. your, your, your underlying skin tone because it's, yes. it's going to be different. Gonna and be your different. skin, and another thing, just your skin changes with seasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like in the winter, you'll get lighter. The summer, you may, I was in Florida and I was tan and I wore a totally different color. So it depends on your skin tone at that time. Um, and it's all works in together in different ways. So yeah, sure. really good question though. Okay. So then we have, um, let's see, another question here, Joyce, what is your favorite brush to start with? Start with. Um, I, I think for beginners, um, so that you don't use too much makeup. I know this is this is called the blush and bronzer brush, but this is the brush that I really recommend along with the detail brush for contouring and for fine areas. This end of the brush is really, these two are so great for beginners. There are other brushes out there that provide um, a lot more coverage, like the buff brush, the 3D brush, um, is not my favorite at all. I, I know it's called the 3D brush, but it's it, the, may that, the way that it's made, it almost looks like a paintbrush. And a lot of us, when you're brand new, you tend to swipe in or pick it up like you would paint and paint it on your face. So, yeah. you know, these are my two favorites. And of course, using them in the right way. It's not like you can't use different brushes when you first start. You just need to make sure that you're using, using them in the right way. How about you, Janine? Did you have a favorite? I, I mean, I, I tend to go with the buff, but I didn't in the beginning. I did with the hack, the regular one, but then yes. definitely the detail though, because especially if yes. you're not used to contouring, which I wasn't, yes. it's so easy to use the, the detail brush yes. because you could get, you know, really Side close, get that jawline and uh, cheek area. So definitely the detail. And then um, I agree the buff and bronze, the um, bronzer brush is really good too. Yeah. And I thought my first brush ever too was the buff brush. Um, you just need to be careful. The buff brush is awesome. More it's for fuller made coverage. For full coverage. Yeah. But if you're brand new and you are not used to using less, the less is more concept, you right. could load way too you much. You pick up on. too much. Yeah. Yep. So you just need Definitely. to be careful. So, yep. Um, and then the question. Okay. My blush, my blush and contour is the first to wear off. Oh, blush and contour. How do I get that to stay longer? I do use setting spray, but not, not the brand. Okay. So one thing that you can't, one thing I do want to tell you about um okay if your contour is, is is you might either be um blending your contour out too much um you may not have the right shade like maybe you need to either go cooler or warmer with your contour shade um the other thing is when you put your blush on um, it, they do tend about five or 10 minutes after you put your blush on, they do tend to kind of calm down a bit. And so, um, you may need to add some more blush. One thing I do want to say is that we, we have like, well, I'm just going to say two, we have two types of blush. We have a matte, which is much more highly pigmented and has longer lasting wear. So the matte cheek shades are going to last much longer than the glossy. Yes. I love to mix matte. I like to put a matte down first. Like right now today, I have 
sandstone on. Yeah. Those That's are, a mat. Yeah, and then I have, this is, um, I think, Tropicana, which is a glossy. So if you don't, like, you're not a big fan of matte and you like a little bit of gloss to your cheeks, a little glow, then you can put, like, a, a complimentary glossy shade over the top. Um, another thing, too, to help in that area is if you're having issues with with it not lasting is you can also use a little bit of um, setting powder, put setting spray on, and then you could put a little setting powder over. And then to get that glow back, if you've mattified it out, then you put a little bit of glossy over the top. Did you have a, any tips about that, Janine? Yeah, as far as your contour, it could be, yeah, it could contour. be I agree with your blending. Um, you want to kind of, when you blend it, you don't want to do this, you want to brush it up into your cheekbone area. And you might, another thing too, is if you're in between skin tones, maybe you could, you, you'll, I use, sometimes I'll use two contours mm -hmm. to give me a little bit oh, more yes. depth and it'll stay more staying power. So mm -hmm. those are, and definitely yeah. like you said, the setting, setting spray for sure. Yeah. And you may find that that is what's so great about this makeup is that it is customizable. So, exactly. you know, you can, you don't need yep, to have just, just one contour shade. Right, um, exactly. some, of, some of us like a, you know, there's a, a much really super cool contour shade to do your nose. You may need something, you may want a warmer shade for your forehead because it kind of gives you that warmth, but you may want to uh, need a more cooler or ashier shade to really chisel out your cheekbones. So, you know, just experimenting with that and then right. don't be afraid, especially um, making sure you're using the right brush. So on your cheeks, one thing really quick, is uh, try the detail brush if you don't have it. You can, I like to side load this brush, tapping it right in. Remember that the consistency of your contours are gonna be much firmer and much drier. They're made that way so that they do last longer. So you can kind of side load that brush and you don't want to do this action. You right. want to actually start and just press it right up underneath your cheekbone. And then you can lightly flick or feather it up right. but leave let let your contour show it can be there okay and so if you need to set it with some setting spray um even a little powder before you go on adding anything else because maybe this area is just not lasting so i hope that helps a little bit yeah all right eyebrows any suggestions for disappearing eyebrows disappearing <laughs> eyebrows <laughs> Well, I definitely feel that I use one of our eyeshadows for my brows and a setting spray. Sometimes I'll spray the setting spray on my spoolie and brush the, my, my brows up and then apply the shadow. Like uh, Karen's got the brush here right in front of me. Um, so that's a good um, good thing to do. Um, what color do you use? Power. Like kind I of a use, dark um, brown? I use um, Trust. Like a dark brown, dark brown matte eyeshadow. Yeah. Yep. Um, sometimes, but, too, you can also try using one of your contour shades. I do that a lot. Contour. Um, mm -hmm. You can outline your brows and then flick up into the brow to add some color. Um, we have the brow wax, up. too. The brow sometimes, wax. Sometimes, you know, they're... Yeah, I mean, if there's no no more hair there at all, but majority of the time it does start to thin out as we age and it does, you know, get gray. Oh, yeah. Our eyebrows get gray. Yeah, so um, try some of those for sure. Definitely, yeah. definitely don't ignore your eyebrows. Um, it's really important, I think, as mature women to three things. <laughs> wear lip, wear color on our lips, wear color on our cheeks, cheeks. and wear enough. Add color to your face Absolutely. and make sure that you frame your eyes, especially if you have hooded eyes, make sure that you darken and shade in your eyebrows. That's going to help with the, with your hooded eyes and really make your eyes pop. Okay. Yep. All right. Sure. So I don't, let me see. I don't think we have any more. Do any we? Questions? Um, oh, what about, a sh I did have, let's see. Oh, we got a couple more here. Well, let's just keep answering. Um, again, like I say, what we just did a live, Janine and I, um, we were talking about um, mature makeup troubleshooting tips, I'm mostly focused on cream makeup. If you uh, just are now coming on and you missed the beginning of this, it will save our we'll save this live um, on our feeds, and you can always reach out to either of us with any questions. Yeah. So this one here, what about a shade for gray gray haired gals? Brows. Eyebrows, well, uh, brows. Um... You want to go a couple shades, mm -hmm. a little couple shades, you know, depending on the color yeah. of your gray, you want to go, you don't want to go really, I wouldn't say really dark, because um, you want to get it, give it a little softer look. Um, 
you know, like I know, for instance, someone who's got white hair, she looks really good, like in a, like in a blonde, like a tawny color is really pretty on her. So you want to definitely not go too, too deep. I mean, it's, it's still attractive. It depends on the fairness of your skin. There's a lot of yes. factors there. So we'd have to kind of look and maybe make mm -hmm. suggestions with that as far as, you know, what yeah. colors would be good. And I agree. I think, you know, depending on if you, if your contour shade is more of a cooler contour shade, which it probably is if you have, have the gray hair, depending. But yeah, I would say, you know, try, try putting your contour shade up there. Um, right. You'd be surprised. And, you know, when you first darken up your eyebrows, when, when you've lost um, and they've gone white or you've lost a lot, it, it's kind of scary. <laughs> yeah. Because and you might scare your, your family members because they're going to be like, what did you do to your face? Something's different. <laughs> well, yeah, something's different. I actually have eyebrows. So and if, it takes if, a little bit to get used to, but try it. Try it. Yeah. yeah. And if you're too try warm, it. maybe if you go too deep, yeah. like if you're, you may be more of an ash, ashy color. So if you go too warm, it's, it's just not going to go right with the hair color. So it depends on the color match, you know, and what we do with that. Because usually, yeah. like Karen said, the contour will match your eyebrow. For sure. Okay, here, here's a great question. Um, Donna, Donna, Donna. Hi, Donna. Okay, hey, Donna. Donna. She just got her makeup. Yay, Donna. I'm so glad it arrived. For me. Okay, so contouring is new for you. Still learning. Does everyone have to contour? So, no. So, I'm going to tell you a couple, the three places, four places, really quick. We, I know both of us have some contouring videos out there that we can share. Contouring your forehead. Why do you do that? Two reasons. If you have to change the shape of your forehead or your or to, to narrow it. If you wear bangs, you don't need to contour your forehead. If you have bangs covering it, that's an instant. You don't need to. Right. Um, Show me face. If you have a shorter forehead and you're happy with the way your forehead looks, you don't need to contour it. You're not chiseling any con. You're not chiseling any bones up on your forehead. You're just adding a shadow and changing the shape of your forehead. So don't need to do it. If you have bangs, don't do it. Your nose, a little bit trickier. Not everybody needs to contour their nose. It tends to be a little bit trickier to do. Um, basically, the only reason why you would want to really contour your nose is maybe to make it look narrow or more short. I rarely contour my nose. I, yeah, I'm the same. Yeah. Cheekbones, yes, Cheekbones. I love to. I think it's really important. You are chiseling and defining bones in by adding contour. And you do want a really distinct, con you, you want a bit of a contour line. You, you want that shadow, you want your cheekbone yeah. to, you want that line to dip in so that your cheekbones protrude out. And then finally, eyes <laughs> underneath <laughs> the jaw, um, every Got month it. this tends to have less and less definition. <laughs> um, but basically, yes, contouring along here, we're not going on our face, but we're actually contouring to help define our jawline from our neck. You right. don't have to do it, you know, but it's and, really cool and it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. And the contouring, to answer your question, I think it was Donna, sorry, I yep. took my glasses off, is when you contour, you don't want to go any lower than the, the bottom, the edge of your eye. And when you contour, you want to start from the bottom up and go above your ear. So that'll give you an upward shadow and then apply your cheek color. So above your um, contour and just blend it out. So it really makes a difference with the, with the cheek. You, I think as we, well, we know as we mature, you lose that elasticity, you use that, lose that structure. So that's, yes. what, that's what contour is. Yeah. Definitely. It's more of a chisel definitely. look. Yes. How far towards um, your eye should your eyebrows go? Okay. okay. So I'm sorry. Yeah. You want to do this one, Janine? So, yeah, sure. So what's your do you brows? Have a pen or pencil to show them? I got a little, let's see. I'll use my, um, my, just here, my, uh, my line. So yeah. what you want to do with your brows is you always kind of want to go the side of your nose and go straight up. And that's where your brow will start right there. Then you're going to angle on the outer side of your uh, pupil. That's where your arch will be. And then you angle a little more and that's how you find your tail right on the edge of your eye there. Yeah. Really simple. I mean, and honestly, as we mature, mine might be a little bit lower today, I'll be honest with you, but you don't want your eyebrows coming down. You want to keep everything up and out, everything up and out. You want to keep things up because if you pull your eyebrows down, that's going to pull your eyes down, your face down. Yeah. So it's really, it's a matter of practice. We could do, maybe we could do an yeah. eyebrow thing. Definitely. That'd Definitely. be fun. Love, yeah, love we'll, we'll do that. Yeah. Every month I'm going darker and darker with my eyebrows. I, I, I'm getting braver and braver. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I think it makes such a difference. Really makes your eyes pop. 
All right, I think we have one more question and then we'll then we'll we'll get off of here. Okay. Uh, last one and I'm gonna let's see, Janine, I'll have you. I'm looking for a good eyeshadow primer for oily lids. Okay. I might have to do some research on that. I know that there's some out there that are for that. One thing I do want to tell you is that if you have oily lids, make sure that you use a little bit of gentle toner or something to make sure your eyelids are clean before you start putting exactly. your makeup on and removing the oil a bit. Exactly. That's, one, that's one helpful thing. Yeah, tone, exactly. that's perfect. Yeah, toner is really good for neutralizing your pores and gentle, the oil secretion. Gentle. Also, our highlight colors kind of on the, on the, on the um, eyes act as a primer. So if you're using a main color, like a, a foundation color, then you could use you could use a little bit of setting powder yeah, um, on the, um, yeah, on your, and that will help set, um, maybe instead of getting a primer, um, that. that will help set your, your makeup and that'll help absorb some of that oil too at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Carolyn, definitely, um, you know, maybe yeah. reach out to either myself or, but we could, we can go out and we can ask some questions and find, yeah, find that definitely. answer we'll get, we'll get the answer for you. Yeah. yeah, for sure. All right. And then dry lids. Fun. Okay. Dry lids. Yeah, I would say, um, you know, that's part of that moisturizing that you need to be having a good skincare system and moisturize. And eye pregnant. cream, and eye, good eye cream eye for cream. your eyes. Like at night or in the morning, be sure to hydrate and moisturize your eye area. That'll help. Well, thank you so yeah. much. Thank you, Janine. It's been fun. Thank and you. It's been fun. Again, if you yeah. hung out with us through the whole uh, yes. <laughs> live. It was we really so fun. appreciate you. Thank you we were so, so much. Nervous. We were so I know we were like this. But like Janine was so awesome. <laughs> yes, yeah, so awesome. So if, Thank if you. you're interested, reach out to us. We love doing what we do. Um, we do. We love message it. either of us directly and we can help in any way we can. So have a great day. Thanks everybody. Thank you, Janine. All right. Thanks, okay. Karen. Bye. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, you everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.